Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Jarvis Curley, who faces charges stemming from a number of traffic stops in which officers found either drugs, drug paraphernalia, firearms, or all three, now enters a plea to five cases filed against him and was sentenced to four years in prison. 28-year-old Curley was stopped a number of times in just a six-month period for such infractions as a cracked windshield, driving on a suspended license, and displaying fictitious license plates. When officers searched the vehicle Curley was in, uh, that he was in, they regularly found drugs and drug paraphernalia. Curley asked to be released for one day so he could visit with his wife and child before leaving for prison, but Judge Gordon Webb denied that request. He said Curley was a methamphetamine addict and they did not trust him to stay away from the drug if he was allowed to be free. Dole George of Mountain Home has been sentenced to 10 years in prison with seven to serve and three suspended after pleading no contest to charges stemming from his involvement in a drug sale made to a confidential informant working with law enforcement. In mid-March of last year, investigators were tipped that Caitlin Perry had offered to sell a quantity of methamphetamine for uh, for $75,000. The confidential informant set the buy up and when the informant arrived at the prearranged location, telephone contact was made with Perry, who told the informant George would deliver the drug and take the money. Perry said she could not complete the transaction herself because she was getting dressed to go to court. Investigators noted that George had been in the Baxter County Jail 118 times since records began to be kept electronically back in 1995. He has been sentenced to prison four separate times and has been on probation or parole five separate times. Well, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has added more than 2,200 acres of access for hunters and anglers in 2017, including a location in Marion County, making the Crooked Creek a faster float land for waterfowl hunting, upland game, and, uh, and bat conservation highlights the improvements for the Wildlife Commission. The section of Crooked Creek between Snow and Kelly's Slab not only harbors huge small bass, but officials note that it is also one of the most prestigious stretches of the stream throughout the state. A new access on old U.S. Highway 62 west of Yellville will make it possible to enjoy without investing in an entire day. The new access on George's Creek splits that float almost in half, making it much easier to get out that afternoon or morning float for those who do not have a full day to fish or float. Flight instructor Chris Branham has told the Boone County Regional Airport Board that he has been given some has been given lessons in Harrison, but now he wants to plant his roots here. Branham, who owns Branham Aviation out of Hollister, Missouri, has approached the board with plans to build one hangar and eventually two more. At that point, he said he could hang out a shingle at the airport and operate out of the Harrison uh, Regional Airport. Branham first went to the board with a proposal in June of 2016. At that time, Branham told the board that he was an Air Force fighter pilot who got out and went back in after a 9-11 serving the Missouri National Guard. At that time, uh, the board approved his request, and he has been teaching several students in the Harrison area since then. He added that the design of the airport, the length of the runway, and the general attitude of the employees make the airport his best for his type of operation. Two flippin' art students have placed uh, have been placed in the annual Arkansas Wildlife of Arkansas Student Art Contest and Exhibition presented by the Arkansas Wildlife Federation and Creative Ideas. Those students are 14-year-old Erica Blau, 
who received first place in the 7th through the ninth grade division. And 11-year-old William Rasco placed third in the elementary grade division. The competition aims at encouraging students to increase their awareness regarding conservation of Arkansas wildlife and natural areas. Their artwork was on display at the Arkansas Wildlife's annual Governor's Conservation Awards Banquet and showcased through uh, travel to Arkansas Game and Fish Commission's nature centers throughout the state. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at some headline news from around the region as TK08 News continues. From the makers of the best-selling Yamaha Grizzly and Kodiak 700 comes the all-new Kodiak 450, the world's only mid-size ATV with Yamaha-proven off-road capability, all-day comfort, and confidence-inspired performance. The all-new Kodiak 450, starting at just $59.99. For the month of November, Quality Feed Grains deals of the month include buy eight bags of rice bran for only six fifty dollars a bag and get a 20-pound bag of BB2 Deer Supplement free. Roughage Buster 200-pound tubs of kettle supplement are only $96. And 12% all-purpose pellets formulated for all species, only $4.75 a bag. Quality Feed Grains with two locations, 4617 Highway 65 South and 311 East Prospect in Harrison. Harness Boots and Shoes in downtown Harrison remains the leader in the most popular and durable footwear for women, men, and children. For the ladies, Harness Boots and Shoes features a wide variety of Birkenstocks and Birkenstock socks, plus winter boots from Merrill and Mucks, as well as Twisted X and Short Boots. For you men, Harness Boots and Shoes brings you the best variety in the area for work, dress, and casual wear including brands such as Justin, Double H, Rocky, Georgia, and Wolverine. And the boys and girls have a wide selection to browse through, too. Harness boots and shoes with outstanding customer service matched with layaway and free gift wrapping all year round. It sure is a shopping experience that will bring you back time and time again. Harness Boots and Shoes, 870-741-5750, or come on down and look for the big red boot on the square at downtown Harrison. Just a little spicy. With standard safety features, plenty of cargo space. That's not hot for you. No. And advanced technology. The 2018 RAV4 is ready for any adventure. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash, or qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months on the adventurous 2018 RAV4. Hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places. Police say a man is dead and a teenager wounded in a shooting in North Little Rock. Officers investigating reports of gunfire about 11.30 p.m. Friday found 58-year-old Alan Ray McGuire dead outside of an apartment and, 18 -year -old, and an 18-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the arm. The 18-year-old was taken to a hospital and admitted in an undisclosed condition. Detectives are interviewing witnesses, but no arrests have been made as of news time. Authorities in Pulaski County say a masked man fatally shot a woman who was standing outside her apartment complex with her uh, children. A five-year-old child was also struck by the gunfire on Friday morning, and the shooter has not been caught at this time. Police say 30-year-old April Harris died following the shooting about 6.30 a.m. at the complex just outside the North Little Rock city limits. Burke says Harris was outside the building with her four children when she was approached by a person wearing a ski mask who then shot her and the five-year-old she was carrying. A nine-year-old, a 10-year-old twins escaped without injuries. The five-year-old child is in stable condition as of news time. Well, recently released court records provide new details about the, monu uh, the moments before a shooting that injured more than two dozen people at a Little Rock nightclub and 
uh, outline an investigation into the mass shooting last summer. According to the documents about the July shooting at the uh, Power Ultra Lounge, 19-year-old Tyler Clay Jackson told police he fired about 10 shots into the nightclub crowd and shot at least three people. Police accused Jackson of being the initial shooter and arrested him in October on charges of second-degree battery and aggravated assault. Police initially said the shooting involved rival gangs but haven't disclosed which gangs were involved. A spokesperson for the department was unable to say whether Jackson has any gang associations. Juvenile justice officials in Arkansas say that budget issues are interfering with efforts to move away from the jailing of use. Juvenile justice activities have lobbied to uh, shift the agency's funds to community-based providers rather than continuing to focus on youth lockup systems. Asa, Governor Asa Hutchison proposed budget for the physical year that begins July 1st and gives the Division of Youth Services General Revenue Fund $49 million, which is an increase of $400,000 over the prior year. Longtime juvenile public defender Dorsey Corbin says locking kids away is not effective and that funding community services will save taxpayers money in the long run. The ex-boyfriend of a Minnesota woman is accused of killing her and burning her body in the state of Louisiana. He was also charged with a federal count of kidnapping. 27-year-old Christina Proden of Indina was reported missing by her mother on January the 5th. Broden's former boyfriend, 25-year-old uh, Joseph Potter, was arrested by Arkansas State Police last week in Little Rock on suspicion of auto theft. Broden's burned body was found in a shipping container in New Orleans on January the 6th. Porter's husband, Richard Crawford, told investigators that Porter admitted to killing Proden somewhere in the state of Minnesota and taking her body to New Orleans where she was burned. Porter has not been charged in her death as of news time. Before we take a look at the weather forecast, which is much warmer than we had to deal with over the last couple of weeks, here's the way the stock market ended today. Much warmer today. I had a nice weekend and almost spring-like temperatures out there, particularly on Sunday. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms moved through the area last night all the way across the state of Arkansas and parts of southern Missouri. As a matter of fact, there was a tornado they said that touched down near the community of Mount Vernon, Missouri. No one was injured, but some structures were damaged. Luckily, in the viewing area, no reports of any damage from that heavy thunderstorms that moved through the area about uh, 8 till, to about 10 p.m. last night. We did get some much needed rainfall, inch and a quarter to an inch and a half reported in most parts of the viewing area. That was much needed and kind of settled the ground a little bit after being frozen and then thawing out and so forth. But weather-wise, looks like we're going to stay fairly mild throughout the week. May have a little rain the latter part of the week as well. Here's the way it looks moving through the work week. Tomorrow, again, under mostly sunny skies, getting up to 48 degrees with a southwest breeze of 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Wednesday, even warmer, up to 53 degrees. And then on Thursday, we break the 60-degree mark. Lots of sunshine on Thursday, 60 degrees, south wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Friday, we cloud up a little, partly cloudy skies and 53 degrees. And on Saturday, possibility of some morning showers and thunderstorms coming through very quickly. 48 degrees for a daytime high, about 60% chance of some rainfall. But it's going to stay very mild no cold weather, at least in the uh, next 10 to 12 days, according to the National Weather Service. So that's a good thing. Uh, we're getting ready, of course, to move into February here. Boy, January is going by very quickly. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. Take a look at sports from around the region as TK08 News continues. Baby, it's...
it's cold outside, but it's hot inside Shelby's baby department. We have warm swaddling blankets by Little Unicorn and soft plush animals and matching reading books by Jelly Cat. Our bath accessories and unique toys by Aiden and Anae and Cloud B make great gifts. Come by to see our ever-expanding clothing and accessories for babies and toddlers by Minnetonka and cozy pillows in a variety of colors. Our baby books help make memories to warm any cold night. And don't forget our baby registries and free gift wrap. Basketball makeup games tonight. Local schedule has the Izzard County Invitational Basketball Tournament uh, as it wraps up its opening round at Izzard County High School in Brockwell. Mammoth Spring Junior Girls start off going up against Cave City. The Calico Rock Junior Boys will face Mountain View, and Calico Rock Senior Girls will meet Cave City. The Melbourne Senior Boys take on Rural Special. Elsewhere on high school levels, Bruno Pyatt makes the trip to Western Grove, and Jasper will host Deer. All of Mountain Home's junior high squads will take a trip over to Bergman on, on the high school campus, and the junior high basketball Cotter team makes a trip to Yellville Summit. St. Joe entertains Lead Hill. Marshall heads to Alpena, and the Omaha Eagles are home against Green Forest. Mountain Home High School wrestling team had a successful road outing on Saturday. The Bombers ended up winning the Berryville Invitational Tournament, beating out second place Springfield Glendale by six points. Mountain Home had two wrestlers win their individual weight categories. Riley Peter was first in the 170-pound division, beating opponents from Glendale and Conway. He then topped Cole Hethcote of Russellville by a fall. Owen Gaff's first opponent in the 184-pound class uh, was forfeited, and he won his semifinal championship match over a pair of wrestlers from Rogers, both by a fall. Gatham Gifford made five of Arkansas State's season-high 13 three-pointers and scored 23 points, and the Red Wolves defeated Little Rock 70-62 on Saturday night. Arkansas State shot better than uh, from the arc at 56% than overall, which was 51%, and even the free throw line, which was only 45%. Ty Cockfield and Devin Simons added 11 points each for the Red Wolves, who snapped a five-game losing streak. Both the Red Wolves and the Trojans are two and five in Sunbelt Conference play. Jalen Friday scored 18 points. Jaron Lewis scored 13 with 11 rebounds. And Abilene Christian pulled away in the second half for a 80-63 win over Central Arkansas on Saturday afternoon. The Wildcats led 38-37 at halftime before turning a 63-57 advantage with just under six minutes left in the uh, and to move on to a 70-57 uh, score with a layup from Friday at the uh, and a three-pointer from Palin Ricketts and Jalen Franklin with a big dunk with two minutes left to play. The Bears went scoreless for four and a half minutes and missed six shots. Ricketts and Franklin sandwiched dunks between Gordon Howard's layup for the Bears for a 17-point lead with just 77 seconds left to play. Howard scored 28 points for the Bears on 10 of 18 shooting and made four of Central Arkansas's five three-pointers. The rest of the Bears combined to shoot 13 of 39. Not very good shooting. Reed Timer scored 18 of his 24 points in the second half, and Drake survived a miserable three-point shooting to beat Missouri State 61-58 on Saturday. The victory left the Bulldogs alone atop the Missouri Valley Conference at 6-2 on the conference season. The Bulldogs were only 3 of 26 from the arc, but Timer broke the uh, final tie with two free throws with six minutes left to play and added a layup and four more free throws in the final few minutes. Jared Rhodes and Jared Dixon scored 15 points each for Missouri State. 
That wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. As we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events around the viewing area.